can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight are the ramparts we watched who were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare and the bombs bursting in gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land and above the free and the Hey guys, Bill Spadia here. Welcome back to our live streaming show, Common Ground. Here we are at the Ocean View Restaurant in Seaside Heights at the Boardwalk on the beach on this gorgeous Saturday of Memorial Day weekend. Uh, we started off this, and I hope you had tuned in to hear the rendition of the national anthem, Ronnie Brooks. What an incredible, incredible voice he has. Um, you know, I, I was talking about it on the radio all week, and it is one thing to kick off the Jersey Shore season, and we love that. We love that the folks that are here and a lot of folks that lined up early to get in early, grab that uh, that morning beer as we kick off the Jersey Shore season. But it is truly about those who made the ultimate sacrifice. It is truly about um, those that serve, those that sacrifice, and we have dedicated this show, as we did last year, to honoring our veterans, honoring those that put on the uniform, and honoring not just the fallen, but the families of the fallen who have to carry on that legacy and live with the trauma and the pain of losing someone who sacrificed everything for complete strangers. And that really is what it's about when we talk about our veterans, we talk about our uh, firefighters and our cops. So I want to start today off with a 28-year veteran. He's got uh, a distinguished career in the armed services, uh, Army National Guard, Vinny Saracusa. Vinny. Bill, how are you? Welcome. Great hey, to see you. Thank you very much. Great to see yeah, you. Great to be here today. So, <clears throat> so the uh, l- let's talk about it, Vinny. Let- let's talk about your career first. I mean, what got you to... Uh, start in the army uh, how old were you what yeah, uh, so, what motivated you yeah so 19 years old uh started yeah. you were off a kid at, yeah i was a kid right because yeah. i was just kind of figuring it out and getting yeah. it done right yeah and uh, but i knew it was a bigger purpose than me right so uh, and that was what was most important yeah right? so i did some active duty time to four years active duty need so you were in you were in high school yeah Right? You're, now you're 19, so what happened? You, you tried a couple of jobs. You're like, this is not yeah, working for me, right? Yeah, I was going to college, right? and I was like, oh, this isn't for me right now. Yeah, right? okay. And then a uh, buddy of mine was like, hey, maybe we should join the uh, the Marines or the Navy or something like that, right? Yeah. So um, 
went to the Marine recruiter, and yeah. he stood me up. No kidding. <laughs> he, did, he stood me up, that guy, right? <laughs> wasn't meant to so be. It wasn't meant to be, right? <laughs> so then uh, the Navy recruiter's like, hey, you want to take a seat? I'm like, yeah, sure. Next thing you know, I got my yeah. hand up, and I'm in the Navy. No kidding. Fact. How, uh, how long active duty with the Navy? Yeah, so four years, to, uh, yeah. two years in Cuba, two years on the Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Great opportunities, you know, great times, learned a lot. Yeah. Uh, and then I transitioned to the Army National Guard, where I'll tell you, I just met some amazing people, yeah. done amazing experiences. Um, and, uh, you know, that's when I really realized that it's greater than me, you know, what we're doing. So you're, I mean, now here you are a few years older than 19 yep. and you served your time and 20 years is a distinguished career in the service. Uh, t- take me back uh, to uh, being on the ship and being on board and being at sea for what well, weeks on end, months on end. Yeah, like? so as a young man, you know, that was challenging, you know, because yeah. all my friends are out going to college and they're getting it done, right? And, uh, you know, I kind of felt like, ah, maybe I wasn't really doing, you know, all yeah. that I could do. They're hanging I, out drinking on the weekends. They're hanging out drinking, right? And then here yeah. I am, like, maybe I haven't reached my total, my full potential yet. Yeah. Right? So that's when I got out and I went to officer candidate school, you know, in the Army Guard. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, it was long hours. Yeah. Right? But you real then you really realize it's like what's this about? Because it's yeah. not about me doing working all. Was it hours. tough for you as an enlisted guy to uh, then transition to uh, to an officer? No, it wasn't difficult. Yeah. And I realized that because uh, as enlisted, I realized that I had more to offer the, the service. Yeah, you know, and uh, and I want to do it at a higher level. You do it from both sides. You do it from both sides, right? Yeah. But you have more impact. But then you know, I was able to relate to subordinates. You know, whether it be NCOs, right. whether it be right. privates. You know, kind of understand who they are, where they're coming from, what they're going through. You know, yeah. so it was amazing for me, and that empowered me as a leader to just do better. What are your thoughts on the military today? I mean, one of the reasons we do this is not just to honor our veterans, but it's a message to young folks that are out there. You're watching us on YouTube, on Rumble. You're you're on Facebook Live watching us, and, you know, maybe you're in your early 20s. Maybe you're 17, 18, 19 years old. Maybe your parents are making you watch this. I don't know, but, um, you know, and you're thinking about your – next step and i think too often our culture drives these young people to say you got to go to college so you got a lot of but you got a bunch of kids that are getting out of high school like i don't really want to go to college yep but they get shoved into either community college or a four-year program or whatever it is and they don't always find their full potential and then they come out in their 20s and say man maybe i could have made a different decision so we do this also to get young people excited that there is an opportunity. Yeah, so um, the one thing I've learned, you know, going through my years and having friends that didn't serve and those who did, yeah. um, a majority of my friends like, you know, I, I really wish I did that, right? Because of the opportunities and the people that you meet, especially in the National Guard, right? Because yeah. you have all walks of life. You have police, you have fire, you have CEOs, you have very important people, you have, you know, people who are figuring out their lives, right? But those relationships yeah. actually build opportunities. Yeah. Right? And then, you know, what I realize now in the National Guard, right, is that the programs that they have, the college tuition waiver, you know, this isn't just a oh, come join the Guard thing, right? Right. But if you right. take advantage of it, right, uh, it provides opportunities that you may not have had. Yeah. You know? And if uh, you still want to go to college, they're going to help offset the cost and you can go later. Yeah. You know, I'll right? tell you, yeah, you can do, uh, yeah. you know, you do your basic training, your AIT. If you're young, you're just figuring it out. Maybe you don't have money for college, right? Right. And, um, you know, you join the Guard, and next thing you know, you're going to any state school for free. There you go. Absolutely, hands down. Vinny, thank you. Thank yep. you for yep. serving our great country. Thanks oh, for being here. And it. thank you. Uh, you and I are going to talk soon on the radio, so stay tuned. Yeah. You're going to hear from this guy again. He is uh, running for council in his hometown. Yep, uh, Quant- what? Paquonic Township. Paquonic Township. Yep. So you're going right. to be hearing from Vinny uh, Syracuse again. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you, Pleasure Vinny. being here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, let's uh, – let, oh, I have to go to commercial. Look at that. So you know what? Somebody's got to pay the bills. So let's talk about our sponsor, Acteon Networks. Thank you, uh, Acteon. If you are looking for a security solution, a video surveillance for your home, your business, these are the guys to check out. Pop star Iona Mansion started a craze last night by carrying a yellow bucket. Fans have been rushing stores. I can't believe these fools fell for the bucket promotion. What do we make them by next? Hey, how about a surveillance special like Acteon? You fool. We don't want people feeling safe. That's why we sell battery Wi-Fi cameras. Now, go learn more about this Acteon. They must be stopped. Hey guys, Bill Spadia here. Great to have you join us on our streaming show, Common Ground. I want to thank our sponsors, Acteon Networks. I also want to uh, thank our host, New Jersey 101.5 FM, where you can listen to me every morning 
6 to 10 a.m. Well, every weekday morning, because on the weekends, the music comes out to play. Um, Today is, of course, Saturday of Memorial Day weekend. You're going to hear throughout this show a number of veterans who have served our great country. We're going to talk about what it means to be a veteran, what it means to sacrifice for our country and honor the fallen and the families of the fallen. But we also want to be mindful that it is a gorgeous weekend. And one of the things that Memorial Day weekend serves for New Jersey, especially our families and our small businesses and our small towns, is this is the kickoff of the summer season. Everybody says it's the unofficial kickoff. No, no. This is officially summer. In Jersey, summer starts at Memorial Day weekend. Joining me now, my good friend, Mayor John Peterson, who is the mayor of Seaside Park. So great to see you. Thank you, you, Bill, and thank now, you very much. For I want to say me. before, uh, and it's great to have you. It's, it's my honor to have you here. And I want to say this: uh, you were at the forefront of fighting the offshore wind and what was happening with the whales washing up on the beaches. And uh, you and I have become friends through this fight. And I want to thank you for constantly being a voice of reason and common sense on this issue. Thank you as well, Bill, for spreading the word and making people realize not just the importance of our environment, which is first and foremost, but absolutely the importance of tourism, commercial and recreational fishing, and everything that the shore and New Jersey means. And I I look back, I mean, you look at this beautiful ocean today, and I mean, God smiled on us for the weather today. Amazing, right? It's fantastic. It is indeed the kickoff of our season. I'm here with my good friend, as well as yours, uh, Mayor Vaz. He's going to come on in uh, a few minutes. We we do indeed kick off the season uh, and we had to flip a coin to see who goes first, Heights or Park. So we, uh, I don't know who won. I'm not sure if it's better to go first or not. Flipped, I'm not sure. But, but so tell me about what the summer season means to Seaside Park, to the residents of Seaside Park, and to the small businesses here. Well, as you know, Bill, uh, tourism itself, uh, as in all of Ocean County, is a $7 billion industry. Yeah. It's that important. Uh, and I do have a special gift from you, for oh, you from see. the uh, Ocean County Board of Commissioners. The, uh, who we are, love Ocean County, as we know. And uh, that publicizes everything about Ocean County, including our tourism, all the businesses that we have. And, uh, you said it right moments ago, as well as your guests. Uh, this is a weekend of happiness kickoff. Yeah. We're getting ready for barbecues, for fishing, water. If you're brave enough, though, it's a, it's getting it's warmer. It's a little cold. It, it's a little Look, risk. I'm a cold plunger, <laughs> so the fact that the water is like 58 degrees is perfect. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely. But but we always can't forget, and, and our town, and I hope each and every other town, I know Mayor Vaz and all the towns on the shore, uh, will be commemorating the very solemn moment uh, Monday morning. We have yeah. our ceremony on our Pearl Hall lawn. Uh, we had Lieutenant uh, Colonel Rudder, who's here. I saw him moments ago. Who's been our speaker? We've had a many list. Of Colonel Scott Rudder is a is an American hero. He no is question indeed. about it. We had him on the podcast last year. And uh, we all of a sudden were overbooked with guests today, but uh, we may squeeze him in before uh, before we leave. If he's no, still here. And and as I as you correctly noted, and and I would as well. Those that are who do not take the time to learn history in our schools yeah. and otherwise, uh, unfortunately, may be destined to repeat history. And yeah. uh, I can only think we're here. The beauty of this ocean out there, and I. I turn back uh, I wasn't honored to be a veteran but my dad was a commander in the United States Navy and uh, when he graduated from college of course first and foremost uh, his parents were somewhat aghast that he would graduated from Princeton and now you get him out in the world and get a decent job and no (laughs) he returned to be the captain which he was of the Seaside Park lifeguards it's fantastic but once that summer season ended uh, he went into the United States Navy. God bless him. And uh, he served right off of here, our beautiful coast, and people sometimes don't realize it, yeah. that all the beautiful boardwalk businesses, our, my grandparents' home had the blackout shades because of the subs that were yeah. off the New Jersey coast. Right. And uh, he served my, my dad in uh, convoy duty on destroyers. No kidding. And if we don't take the time to remember each and every one of them who served us, it's it's shame on us. We absolutely have to in our schools and our community yeah. events and otherwise. You're 100% right, John. And I, I think that this is part of what we talk about. And I talk about on the air at 101.5 in the morning that we've got to do a better job in our schools to 
teach American history. I don't think there are a lot of Jersey kids going through school right now who understand what you just said about the blackout shades. No. Nope. That they were worried about giving our enemy in World War II, giving the Nazis the opportunity to see targets. So everyone on the coast, everybody at the Jersey Shore was told, shut your lights, black out the shades, so there was no backlight. To, so our ships were protected. Right here. and uh, Happened in, right here. In this very area. Yeah. And uh, the boardwalk businesses continued as best possible, but they had huge blackout curtains along this very boardwalk, Seaside yeah. Park's boardwalk as well. This, it's amazing. Just to prevent those light images to give a target for the, sh- the what subs. An amazing history. Yeah. Uh, John, always great to see you. So listen, uh, we want you to come down the shore this weekend. It is a... I'm going to say this is a perfect day. There isn't a cloud in the sky. The ocean looks perfect. The sun is shining. Come down here. The humidity is low. I mean, I I think last year I was already sweating. I mean, this is the humidity is low. It is literally perfect. Come down to the Ocean View restaurant. Grab a beer for breakfast and enjoy the Jersey Shore. And as Mayor Peterson said, be mindful of our veterans. Be mindful of the reason for this three-day weekend. But that doesn't mean don't come down and spend some money and have an absolutely fantastic time. Absolutely, Thank you, Mayor Bill. John Peterson. Thank great you to see you. Me. Seaside Park's a great Thanks. place, and you got a great mayor. <laughs> All right, let's hear uh, from one of our sponsors, our good friends at the Common Sense Club. Hey, guys, Bill Spadia here. Like you, I am sick and tired of the culture of acceptance that has been beaten into us by Trenton politicians on both sides of the aisle accepting their higher taxes, accepting higher tolls, crumbling roads, accepting a radical school curriculum, accepting busloads of illegal border crossers, accepting prisoners being let out before they complete their sentences, and perhaps worst of all, accepting losing November after November. It is time to break the mentality of acceptance being pushed by Trenton politicians. We need to demand common sense policies and leaders who get it. Hey guys, Bill Spadia back with you. Thank you for joining me on this beautiful Memorial Day weekend. Here we are Saturday, the kickoff of the summer season at the Jersey Shore. You heard from Seaside Park Mayor John Peterson. Now, uh, as we are in beautiful Seaside Heights, New Jersey at the Ocean View Restaurant, number two at the Boardwalk, I want to bring in my friend, Mayor Tony Voss. Mayor, Bill, great pleasure, to see you. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for joining me. And uh, let's talk about what this, and we were talking earlier, we had a, a veteran on, we talked about the the impact of Memorial Day, but let, let's Let's talk about Seaside Heights and the summer of tourism and money and revenue, what this season means to all these businesses out here. Again, uh, weather plays an important part. Economics play a very important part. My belief, my personal belief is that the United States has to have a real good turnaround. We have to, as mentioned earlier, instill in our children from primary grades through high school in the public system the value of history, the value of respect, and change. And that's very important. And one of the things you mentioned early on, we're going to talk about Seaside. As a vet, I was in the New Jersey National Guard for six years. As Vinny had said, you have a lot of different types of personalities, but you interchange and you learn new ideas from these people. One of the things that sticks in my mind throughout my adulthood was Ronald Reagan when he said, when you have to have a strong nation, you have to have a strong military. And right now, we don't have a strong military. Not just because of enlistment. We're far behind Mm -hmm. in equipment, in naval vessels, in aircraft vessels. We have to let, from the small politician right to the President of the United States, we have to let the government know, invest money. Strength in military is protection for the United States of America. Yeah, well, you're you're 100% right with that, Mayor, and... We've talked about one of the reasons that we dedicate this show to veterans is not just because we're honoring the fallen and honoring the families that make these sacrifices along with every American, um, but it is also about letting young people know there is an opportunity in the United States military. And, uh, you know, the military is not paying us an advertising 
fee for uh, for recruitment. But I, I feel it's my duty as a veteran, it's my duty as an American to say, you know what, there's an opportunity to serve this great country, and there has never been a greater need than right now. True. As far as the summer season goes for Seaside Heights, unfortunately, the weather the past 12 weekends hasn't been very right? uh, very nice today and yesterday. Weather plays an important part, but it's, again, economics. I believe we're going to have a great summer. I yeah. believe people were cooped up all winter. They want come to a family destination that's going to be the quality of life that they feel safe in and that's what we try to build in seaside heights a reputation of a family destination i love it i mean it's been how long have you been mayor 10 years 10 years but i've also been on council 31 altogether this is your town (laughs) 41 (laughs) years of public service i sleep and eat it what what have you seen that has changed over four decades different values Mm. different changes in culture different changes in recreation and amusements people want change but they want change that they can gravitate to that they feel comfortable with yeah i think it's going to be a great season i think the uh the small businesses are going to benefit from the kickoff weather today i mean you really can't beat it thank you for your uh your service not just in the military but also it is a calling to be uh, blessed with an opportunity to lead people in public office, and you've taken up that challenge, and you do it very well. It's and my honor. Earn the respect. It's my honor. Tony, Thank great you, to see you. Thank Same you, here. Mayor Tony Vaz. Seaside Heights, what a great town this is! And uh, you know, as he said, the weather does play an important role. We can't change the weather, but we can take advantage of it when it is this beautiful. Now, uh, our next guest will be coming on after this short break with a word from our sponsor, Acteon Networks. Well, that's the last of the boxes. Remember when we got the first copier for the business? There were a hundred copies of your butt. How about our first computers? We could barely turn them on. Hillary finally figured out how to receive email and thought a prince was sending her a million dollars. She sure felt silly after she quit. E-commerce didn't start any better. We shipped dozens of snow shovels by mistake to Florida from our new site. Hey, they were great building sandcastles. We always tried the latest technology. I just wish we had thought about getting video surveillance to protect our business. I never thought it would end like this. Neither did I. Maybe the next owner will be smarter than we were. Hey guys, Bill Spadia back with you. Thank you for joining me on our streaming show, Common Ground. We are live from the boardwalk here in beautiful Seaside Heights, Ocean County, New Jersey at the Ocean View Restaurant. And coming back at you uh, for the second year from this spot, celebrating veterans, honoring those that made the ultimate sacrifice. It is, of course, Memorial Day weekend. We are also mindful that this weekend kicks off the summer season at the Jersey Shore. And as you know, as an advocate for families and small communities and small business, we are not going to miss the opportunity to plug a lot of these small businesses. You heard from uh, Mayor Tony Voss. You heard from Mayor John Peterson. This is a critical time for our economy here in New Jersey. And despite all the nonsense going on in Trenton and in Washington, God smiled on us today with some beautiful weather. So get on down to the Jersey Shore spend some money, enjoy the time with your family, uh, and be mindful of why we have a three-day weekend. Now, one of the, th- the um, uh, main points of focus for me this weekend is to honor those veterans that have served our country faithfully, honor those families who have endured the loss of these heroes who made the ultimate sacrifice. Joining me now, Frank Doc Shoup. He is with the New Jersey Veterans Network. Hey, Doc. It's Great to have you on the show. Yes, sir. I realize you got your friend here. Let's talk about your Oh, that's Shadow America's dog. pup. Yep. He's my service dog. He's actually also a therapy dog, too. He works with a whole team of dogs over at Operation Canine Beethoven, where we go visit schools, hospitals, shelters, just to enlighten people's day and sometimes do some educational stuff. It's a lot of fun. Tell me about your service. Uh, how long did you serve? What was the experience like? And then how you transitioned uh, out of the service? Sure. Army combat medic. Um, I served the tour in Iraq with third id walter reed army medical center when i was active when i was guard i was with the new jersey guard um transitioning out was a difficult time 
Yeah. That was 0809. I had just finished the deployment. Very, very difficult, but hey. What so, was the hardest part of that transition? I think coming home, it was a difficult time as far as jobs go. Yeah. So there wasn't a lot of work and, you know, just getting back on my feet, finding work once again after deployment was very, very difficult. Sometimes businesses don't understand. So when I was deployed, um, unfortunately, my employer let me go because I was going to be gone for a year and, you know, things happen. But you soldier on, you move forward and get better. Do you think the climate is better now than it was 10 years ago for returning veterans? Absolutely. There's so many programs out there to help veterans. Um, with the New Jersey Veterans Network, we have a mobile outreach program. We reach out to veterans throughout the state. We get them the resources they need. We get them the help they need. If they need food, we get them food. If they need clothes, we get them clothes. I um, actually um, also just took a position as Director of Veterans Services for Goodwill Industries. Um, they're not just thrift stores that you go in and buy stuff yeah. and drop donations mm -hmm. off. That money actually goes to social service programs. In my case, it's a veteran program where we go out and do job counseling, job outreach, and get jobs for homeless veterans. Now, how does the Veterans Network uh, operate? Is, it, uh, is there any money from the state, any money from the federal government? Is it all volunteer? How, how do you do it? We are volunteer. We do um, have private sponsors who help us out, and sometimes we try to reach out for grants and assistance as yeah. well. But, yeah, we have a lot of support. Um, but you really operate from the generosity of average folks. We do. Donations, volunteers. Volunteers are key. We have volunteers coming out, helping out veterans. Sometimes we'll do food distributions where we'll have dozens of people come out, set up food, then drive food directly to veterans' homes who don't have cars or are disabled and can't come out to places wow. to get food. Yeah. And do you cover the whole state? We do. How many, about how many volunteers do you have? We do our best to cover the whole state, but um, we, we kind of centered around the northern area. Okay. As far as our volunteers, it varies. I mean, um, we have a couple of dozen volunteers who come around, but yeah. they vary per program. So you don't have to be a veteran to volunteer. Absolutely right? not. Right? And there's no age requirement. If you can drive, you can, uh, you can help, right? Bill. How do people get in touch? Oh, sure. They can reach out to us through our website at njvn.org, or they can email me at docshoop at gmail.com. Docshoop, S-C-H-U-P-P. -P. You got it right, Bill. Right? Yes, sir. That's pretty good, right? First try. First try. Right. <laughs> Doc, what is it? Let me ask you this though. Um, as you, uh, as we get to Memorial Day, do you do you echo some of the things that you've heard earlier today that we're not really doing enough in our schools to talk about the sacrifice? I mean, the the I, the very ideas, these concepts of courage and patriotism and sacrifice, you don't hear about that. Hmm. You know what? As a matter of fact, I have a really good answer for that. Just yesterday, I was picking up food to bring to some veterans who were recently taken off the street who were homeless. And it just so happened to be a teacher who organizes no food distributions. Yep, his name is Chris. He runs a program called Strangers Helping Strangers. Great guy. And then, he, as a matter of fact, his exact words to me was, veterans come first. I'm always going to take care of No that. kidding. Yep. That's fantastic. Great guy. So it's uh, the organization, again, NJ Veterans Network. It's njvn.org. Correct. njvn.org. If you can help this organization, you know, and I've said this before, and again, it's here it is, Memorial Day weekend, and we're honoring our veterans. And uh, It doesn't know any partisan boundaries, so I don't mean this to sound political, but let me say this. The very idea that the state of New Jersey and the federal government are spending billions and billions of dollars supporting illegals who are coming across the border should not be here in the first place and there are veterans yes veterans right here in new jersey in 2024 that will go to sleep tonight with no roof over their head that will not be able to find a job if it weren't for the great work of guys like doc and organizations like new jersey veterans network so be mindful of that when you go to the polls in june and you go to the polls again in november be mindful of are these political leaders prioritizing the people who are literally sacrificing so that complete strangers can enjoy the freedom and the prosperity that is this great country. Think about that. Doc, thank you. Thank really you appreciate you. Appreciate thank you. you. All right. Dog was great. Yeah. But he's ready to go, though. He's he, like, come he's on, I'm thirsty. I got to go. That's all it. All right. Let's, uh, let's take a quick break and hear from our sponsors. Josh and Connie are dining in a noisy restaurant with their new neighbors, the Finkelsteins. Do you like singing too? But the Finkelsteins here. Who likes swinging too? Now Josh and Connie are being invited back to the Finkelsteins for dessert. Hearing the right thing matters. 
especially when buying a video surveillance system for your home. It's a salesman selling Wi-Fi cameras, which need batteries, solar panels, or electric. Some Wi-Fi cameras are vulnerable to hacking and just plain old interference. Is there a monthly contract that's hard to get out of? Is customer support local? We're Acteon Networks, and when you call us, we're going to treat you like you're one of the family. Acteon's a local company. We probably shop together. So why not protect your family with a solution from Acteon Networks? Because not all misunderstandings work out. You're right. Swinging's great. Surveillance never blinks. Learn more today. skies for amber waves of grain for purple mountains majesties above a fruity plain america america god share his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea oh beautiful for spacious skies for amber waves of grain for purple mountains majesty above the fruity plain America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Hey guys, Bill Spadia here. Like you, I am sick and tired of the culture of acceptance that has been beaten into us by Trenton politicians on both sides of the aisle. Accepting their higher taxes, accepting higher tolls, crumbling roads, accepting a radical school curriculum, accepting busloads of illegal border crossers, accepting prisoners being let out before they complete their sentences. And perhaps worst of all, accepting losing November after November. It is time to break the mentality of acceptance being pushed by Trenton politicians. We need to demand common sense policies and leaders who get it. Hey guys, Bill Spadia here, back with you. Thank you for joining me on our new streaming show, Common Ground, brought to you by New Jersey 101.5 FM and a series of sponsors, including Acteon Networks and the Common Sense Club. Thank you for being a part of this kickoff of the Jersey Shore summer season right here in Seaside Heights at the boardwalk from the board, from the uh, outside deck of the beautiful Ocean View Restaurant. You've heard from a number of veterans uh, and if you're just tuning in, 
We are uh, doing really a couple of things today. Well, three things, really. Number one, kicking off the summer season here at the Jersey Shore and making sure we bring in our local leaders, local elected officials to talk about these great businesses that need your help. God certainly smiled on the weather today. It is absolutely perfect. So come on down the shore today and uh, spend some money, enjoy some time with family and friends, help us kick off this economic season that is so critical for so many thousands of businesses at the Jersey Shore. Uh, We're also honoring veterans uh, who are serving with us and have served. And of course, we are honoring those that made the ultimate sacrifice. There is a reason for our three-day weekend, and that is to honor those that gave their lives so we could live in freedom and prosperity. Now, joining me now, uh, a new friend that we have uh, we've made over the past year. His name is Ron Reckler, 34 years in the Air Force. He's also a candidate for counsel in Kinalong. Ron, great to see you. Pleasure to be here, brother. So tell me about 34 years in the Air Force. Um, what got you? Let's, let's go back. What got you to join? Were you right out of high school? Did you enlist? Were you an officer? What, what, uh, what's the story? So I started enlisted. I had done two years of college. I had gotten my uh, pilot certificate, and then Desert Storm happened, or yeah. Desert Shield two happened. Two years on purpose? You signed up for two years, yeah, or you were in the middle years, of two years, two years out of four? Two years out of four. And I mean, you're like, I'm in hmm. college. Desert yeah. Shield happened, Yep. and they called me. Yeah, they didn't really, but I felt like they did. You had a calling. So, yeah, so I had it. a calling, and yeah. I, I enlisted. And so from that, I went to basic training, went to tech school, and then I got activated and went overseas. And so that took about a, another year and a half. Was it easy to leave college? It was. It yeah. was. And and I, I was well on my way to becoming a, a commercial pilot, but uh, yeah. the calling was there. My, my father, my grandfather, my yeah. uncle, it was a family affair. Yeah, what'd so, you fly? Uh, I've flown the KC-10, and um, mostly most of my career has now been as an intelligence officer. Re- no kidding. Yeah. And in 34 years, I mean, at, at what point did you did you realize you were going to stay that long? Uh, Day one, or did it take a couple of years to say, okay, this is where I should be? Well, I'm, I'll tell you, I'm about to sunset my career. I've probably got another eight, ten months left, and then, then yeah. I'm going to retire. It's a young man's game. Um, and it, all along, I've, I've had the desire to serve. It's, it's gotten tougher as days have gone on, and, and you were kind of alluding to, you know, coming back and, mm-hmm. and the support the community gives. Maybe maybe not as much. I've been fired from jobs because of my Air Force commitment. It's yeah. tough. It's tough. But, uh, you know, it's, it is a calling. And so you're in another calling. Uh, you know, people will say that politics is something that grabs someone and, and uh, you, you thought enough of it. Um, you know, maybe it was a little uh, convincing from Sean Maybe or a friend on council in Kinalon. Yep. But, but what got you to take that plunge and get involved in the political world? So I always knew once, once the serving of uh, when the military was over, I was going to try to serve uh, in the public, just like you. you uh, thank you for your service, brother. Thank you for your Thanks. time in. I appreciate that. Well, appreciate we all that. appreciate that. We're band of brothers. Yeah. And sisters. What do you expect? What are your expectations as, as you head into an election? I mean, compared to what you did serving during wartime uh, in the Air Force? I, I've managed, you know, $75 million. Our, our town budget's $20 million. Uh, It's not going to be that much of a challenge. Not that, that much of a... <laughs> Might be easier. A, a, it's, I think it is easier. But, yeah. But uh, there's a code. There's an honor. There's a, there's a, like I said, band of brothers. Yeah. Maybe in politics there isn't. You know, so you've got to kind of take the high road. You've got to... A lot of bad actors no, in politics. That's right. I mean, that's right. Wow. You keep, you, you keep your integrity yeah. because you're going to look at you in the mirror. What do you think has changed as far as the perception of young people? You know, I talk about this on the show all the time that recruitment is certainly down. Absolutely. Um, you know, we see it firsthand with our first responders where we have a nursing shortage. We have a shortage when it comes to firefighters in some area. Uh, we have uh, we have a what what the PBA has talked about, uh, an almost 30% yeah. Uh, decrease in the number of recruits coming in to be cops. How do you see that playing out? Do you see that, is it a cultural thing? And, and, and do you feel you can address that as an elected official? I can, through leadership, through talking. I mentor children. I, I speak at schools for Veterans Day. I'm going to speak for Memorial Day. I do career days. So you, you go out to speak to the, to the young kids and, and tell them what's good about this. What's, what's important? Why is it important to serve? If not you, then who? Right. At, at some point, we, right. we've we've got to look around. Not not everybody needs to serve. But if, if you're able, you know, pick a stand a post, volunteer, do something, help out someone yeah. else, because life is more important than just yourself. Ron, fantastic. Thank you. Always Great to talk to hey, you. Thank you for your service. Thank brother. you. Appreciate, Appreciate you saying it. that. Ron Reckler, um, he is uh, running for council and uh, you need to support this guy. 
And for the young people out there, whether you're in college now, you know, I've said this, not everybody. I want to bring in our next guest, Joe LaBarbera, but while he's uh, while uh, he is stepping up, I, I just want to say a few things that it is absolutely. Come on in, Joe. Yeah, there's no commercial break between this. We uh, sometimes we just go. That's it. We're on the boardwalk. It's a Jersey Shore. It's all good. How are you doing? Good to see you. Uh, but I just want to address that point, uh, and I'll get to my next guest in a second. Um, that that we have a crisis because we don't have a culture that elevates things like courage and sacrifice. We actually have a culture that tears down. We have a culture that's tearing down our military, tearing down our cops. And tearing down just the very idea of commitment to country, you know, things like God and country and family and community, these ideas are lost and have been sacrificed on the altar of instant gratification from TikTok. Mm. And that's part of the problem that people are looking to just keep themselves entertained. They don't think this outside world involves them, but you realize it does take a community, it does take a country, it does take men and women who will, who will actually step up, but it's not all sacrifice. There are some incredible job skills, job security that you get if you consider the military. Don't be fooled and don't be distracted by those high school counselors who tell you you have to go to a four-year school and don't worry about the six figures in debt. Don't worry about that. There's a job on the other end. In many cases, there isn't. And in many cases, the job you're going to get, you could have had even if you didn't go to college. And I'm not discouraging you if you really want to go get that four-year degree but we've got to get back to a country where we value skilled labor where we value uh the idea that we need people to turn wrenches and fix hvac and run wires and and plumbing and construction and all of these great careers that quite honestly can be six figure plus careers for a lot of people who are determined. You know, maybe you've got a passion to be in the arts and sing like you heard Shay in that incredible voice that she has. You don't have to go get a degree in performing arts to do that if you've got talent, but you do have to have some determination and guts. So joining me now, um, a good friend of mine who not only served faithfully, served his country, now serves on the political side and he's kind of living in these different worlds from from business and education, and I, I'm talking about college, of course, and he is a dean at one of the great community colleges that we have in New Jersey, Warren Community College, but he's also the Republican chair in Sussex County, and of course, a long-serving veteran of our armed forces. Great to see you, Joe La Barbera. Hey, How Bill, are thanks. you? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Appreciate being so, here. So let, let's go back in time. You, mm -hmm. uh, When you started your military career, tell me about it. What decision went through your head when you decided, all right, this is for me? All right, so when I was a kid, I was a geek. I played with G.I. Joe. I was in camouflage all the time. Uh, I engaged in warfare uh, amongst my neighbor ki neighborhood kids. I mean, I, was, uh, I loved the military. I was called to it from a young age. I mean, I watched movies like Patton. And um, Battle of the Bulge as a kid, I grew up amongst World War II vets. Yeah. Overwhelmingly, the men in my family were World War II vets. So I, I, I saw the real deal. I saw, yeah. I, I saw the, ultimate, the ultimate thing there, the ultimate soldier there. So um, that was a calling in me. I knew, yeah. I, I knew from the age of six that I had to make a profession of the military. And you enlisted first. Yeah. yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, what was your first service and first uh, tour of duty? Uh, reservist in the Army. Then uh, in college, I met a bunch of Marines who said, what are you doing this? Do you, you should be a Marine. And I ended up becoming a, <laughs> enlisted in the Marine Corps. I ended up becoming a Marine officer. And because uh, I, I think that transition from uh, from uh, Army Reservist to Marine Corps officer. Well, Marine Corps initial entry training is a way of really indoctrinating you. So it, uh, they kind of <laughs> do a lot of the work for you, as you know. And uh, Marine OCS, of course, was a massive attrition rate. It went in the late 90s. And uh, it was a, it was a PT on fest. I mean, it was very demanding physically. I mean, yeah. there were guys who were running in the 15 minutes for three miles, and I mean, almost everybody was practically maxing their PT tests, and uh, nobody yeah. fell out of anything. Three miles, 15 minutes. 15:36 was we had a guy in my platoon who ran a three mile. My best was 21:30. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if that's that good. I don't think so. I'm not so sure. It's, it's, a, a, it's a first class. PT. It's a little more seven seven a mile. Yeah. It's not bad. How about uh -huh. you? How was your run? Uh, my best was just under 19. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah, that was that's pretty good. And I was in the middle of my group at OCS. Yeah. What do you what do you what do you carry out now into civilian life? And uh, let's talk about the education portion. Mm -hmm. uh, you were gracious enough to open the doors at Warren Community College. We toured the drone program. I mean, incredible things happening at Warren Community. Was the is it, is it hard to uh, deal with this generation of young people compared to what you experience in the military and see kind of how our 
our culture has devolved a bit over the last uh, 10 I years. I think with, with this generation now, and uh, to qualify this generation is basically having grown up as the war on terror was ended, and uh, with extreme access to technology, uh, authenticity is key. Uh, this is a, a generation, I mean, there's lots of paradigms about it, but one consistent observation is they see through things because they're, they're constantly lied to on social media. So uh, authenticity is key to them. Paradigms, the rhetoric, you know, the, 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 we're Generation X, so we have the baby boomers giving us cliches and paradigms nonstop. That doesn't work with this bunch. Everything with them is pure authenticity. And what, are you finding that, though, you can break through as an educator now? As in, and, and what do you think it takes to break through? Uh, the educators, the, the uh, faculty we have are having an incredible uh, successful job, and that's the key, is the authenticity. And, uh, you know, it's a great soldier to come on right now after hearing about people driving uh, and pushing towards uh, military careers. The military isn't an industry. It's a way of life. It's a profession. And it's the only profession in the world that requires you to shed your blood. I mean, the others will mitigate that and say, no, you shouldn't, or we don't really want this to happen. The military actually requires you to actually give your life for your country. It puts you in very, very dangerous roles on purpose. So it's a way of life. It's a profession, and it's a belief system. It's not just something you do because you want the benefits. I never saw anybody go in because they wanted benefits and succeed. You yeah. know, there has to be a calling. There has to be a drive to enter into that profession. I think the generation today, uh, in all the falsities they see on social media and the entire artificial environment that they exist in, in this very sanitized artificial environment, I think the military would offer them a, an authenticity and a reality that I think they would appreciate very much. Yeah, living in reality. This, you know, you, you're, we're out here, beautiful seaside heights. It's a gorgeous day. You've got people relaxing mm -hmm. on the beach, people, uh, you know, uh, belling up to the bar. And that only happens because so many men before us have sacrificed and uh, laid their lives down and, you know, died on a beach in France so that we could be here today. Yeah, Normandy. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's, so what, what about politics? Let's talk about that quick. Uh, I have been very critical of both parties mm -hmm. that I don't think either have done enough to honor the military out of, you know, the, you hear the thank you for your service and they will have a couple of flyovers. But, you know, we still have a situation in New Jersey where we have veterans who are homeless. Yeah, uh, veterans who can't get a job. I mean, it's it's outrageous. You think about 2024, there are guys coming out of the military, mm -hmm. served our country, didn't get rich doing it, and now they can't find a job and some can't find a home. Mm -hmm. Crazy. There's 29 in Sussex County that I'm tracking from a nonprofit in our county. There's 29 homeless veterans in Sussex County that we want. Where we're reaching out to a lot of groups to try to start uh, contacting them and finding places for them to stay. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate sure. you. Thank you, Joe for Barbera. Thanks, sir. He is uh, now. This is what you want in uh, in a, a leader in Republican politics, and I think a lot of Democrats who are tuning in, because as you know, our audience is the most, not only the largest in the state, but the most diverse, a third Democrat, a third Independent, and a third Republican. So this is not just about one party or the other. This is about bringing real leadership back to our state. My next guest, Dan Carey, is going to be coming on. He's got more than 20 years in the U.S. Navy, uh, but first a word from our sponsors. Pop star Iona Mansion started a craze last night by carrying a yellow bucket. Fans have been rushing stores. I can't believe these fools fell for the bucket promotion. What do we make them by next? Hey, how about a surveillance special like Active? You fool. We don't want people feeling safe. That's why we sell battery Wi-Fi cameras. Now, go learn more about this Acteon. They must be stopped. Hey guys, Bill Spadia here. Welcome back to Common Ground. Uh, I gave my next guest uh, the wrong last name. It's actually Dan Ryan with 20 plus years, yes, U.S. Sir. Navy. Great to see you. Thanks Thank for you. coming on. You. Uh, you're also running for office locally. Let's talk about uh, your Naval Service first. What got you to enlist? Uh, what, what was the, what sparked it for you? Were you already in college? Were you in high school? When did it happen? Uh, uh, so always wanted to be in the Navy. Uh, kind of grandfather who was a carpenter's mate through World War II. Always wanted to do it. Uh, knew the parents couldn't afford college, so I was a union electrician for a bit, and 9-11 you know, yeah. happened, and it was like, boom, going. Really? So it was a bomb technician or explosive ordinance. No explosion. kidding. Yeah, How'd you get into that line? Because you were already an electrician. Figured uh, so, you had some skills. Correct. So yeah, the Put it in an outlet and correct. disarm a bomb? It's, yeah. it's, it's the same thing, right? It's hand in hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So came home with both of them, though, luckily. Yeah, thank God, yes, right? Yes, sir. But uh, yeah, just kind of progressed with those skills dan let me ask you that i mean that you know now that that career choice i mean to be in a bomb squad very dangerous stuff were you 
Were you, was that front of mind the danger, or was it just I got a job to do? And honestly, whether it's putting wire in a commercial building or uh, disarming a bomb, or di- just a job. It was just a job, but also yeah. like you know, jokingly, it's you get to mess up once. I wouldn't even know about it. So <laughs> I love know, the so. gallows humor. Yeah. Right. So, Twenty yeah. years. What kept you? Uh, the camaraderie, the, the folks yeah. around me that had the passion to just be the best. So it's yeah. uh, it was our community is not a part of naval special warfare. We're naval special operations. Yeah. So we served with Marines, Army, Air Force, uh, all the services that need to be you know cleared. So what uh, what about coming back? You, you come back, you're done, you've done your time, right? And now you run for office. Uh, so running for office at my local VFW yeah, yeah. for the vice commander position. I love it. But that's uh, yeah, but that's yeah. a public position. It's a position we've worked with the VFWs for you know across the state. I mean that's you are putting yourself out to have the responsibility of other people. Correct. Right. How does that feel? And what drove you to do it? Because most people don't want to do that. Correct. So like they'd yourself, rather somebody else in charge. Well, I'm the kind of person that sees an issue and tries to yeah. you know either help others correct it or do it myself. So. Yeah. Uh, we have a, you were at the beefsteak to which, you know, yeah. our VFW is flooded. Uh, it was, you know, our commander, Wayne Stein. Uh, Good guy. A, uh, fantastic guy. So yeah. He's the reason I'm here. Uh, and the, it just was hurting. So he needed help. Yeah. Uh, so stepping up and assist him and, uh, you know, folks like, like Ron, uh, who are part of the VFW as well, to yeah. do good things. Awesome. Dan, great to, great pleasure, to see sir. you. you. Thank too. you. Uh, Dan Ryan, 20 years in the U.S. Navy. And my next guest uh, will be coming on in a minute after we hear a word from our sponsors. But I want to say something. Uh, to everybody here and and our, our both our live audience and our streaming audience, that the VFW in Butler flooded. And that's true. And it happened during some bad rains. And we've had a lot of flooding throughout Morris County. The radicals want to tell you it's because of climate change and that's because you're driving an SUV. It's a bunch of garbage. Let me tell you why we're seeing so much flooding in North Jersey. Because we've got rivers all throughout Morris County, Passaic County, Bergen County, even Ocean, Monmouth County, rivers, uh, Somerset County included, rivers that have not been dredged in 10, 15, 20 years. You've got the Whippany River that in parts used to run at six, seven feet deep, now runs at 18 inches in spots. You've got a Department of Environmental Protection that is so woke and so full of all of the PC garbage being pumped down uh, you know, from the radicals like Phil and Tammy Murphy and others in the Biden administration that all of a sudden you, you have no action. We had a situation, I've talked about this before, my good friend Jamie Barbario, who is the mayor of Parsippany, there was a huge tree that fell into one of the uh, 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 areas of the river a uh, huge tree fell partly because we don't shore up the banks, we don't dredge, we don't desnag the rivers. Tree falls, diverts the water. Water now starts flooding the local town, businesses, homes, etc. What does Jamie do as a leader? Gets in a big rig and they pull the tree out. You know what happened? Within two weeks, the DEP sent him a fine for $100,000 because the banks were considered wetlands and not an appropriate spot for a, for a, uh, a, a commercial vehicle to come in and pull out the tree. Are you kidding me? We've got a state of stupidity right now, and we've got to fix it. So don't buy into the radical nonsense that we all have to be driving electric cars in order to keep the flooding. That VFW should not have flooded. If we had proper environmental management, where we cared about our environment, we cared about our waterways, but we allowed for the natural uh, progression where we saw what would happen. The river starts to build up silt. You dredge that river. You shore up the banks. You desnag it from all the stuff that falls in it. We have a responsibility as New Jerseyans to take care of our environment. You heard Mayor John Peterson say that earlier. We've got to take care of the environment. We do not need uh, windmills off the coast of New Jersey killing our marine life and killing our commercial and our um, our fishing industries, our charter industries, and wrecking the great economy at the Jersey Shore. we got to be smart about this. So stop buying in. If you're a young person and all you hear across social media is all of the doom and gloom and the scary nonsense that somehow we're going to be underwater in uh, 10 years if we don't all drive electric cars, it's all nonsense. The climate's been changing since there's been a climate. What we got to do is take care of our present environment here in new jersey we do that with common sense and good local leadership all right let's hear from our sponsor and then our next guest uh, you're going to want to hear from him well that's the last of the boxes 
Remember when we got the first copier for the business? There were a hundred copies of your butt. How about our first computers? We could barely turn them on. Hillary finally figured out how to receive email and thought a prince was sending her a million dollars. She sure felt silly after she quit. E-commerce didn't start any better. We shipped dozens of snow shovels by mistake to Florida from our new site. Hey, they work great building sandcastles. We always tried the latest technology. I just wish we had thought about getting video surveillance to protect our business. I never thought it would end like this. Neither did I. Maybe the next owner will be smarter than we were. Hey guys, Bill Spadia back with you. Thank you for joining me for our live streaming show, Common Ground. I want to thank our sponsors, Acteon Networks, Common Sense Club, and of course, New Jersey 101.5 FM, where you can hear me every weekday, 6 to 10 a.m., uh, talking truth and common sense. Now, one of the reasons that we are here in Seaside Heights on the boardwalk at the beautiful Ocean View restaurant right here, the beach and the ocean behind me, God certainly smiled on this incredible weather day that we are having. This is the official kickoff of the Jersey Shore summer season. We need you down here. You're going to spend money anyway this weekend. Spend it at the Jersey Shore and make sure we help these great small businesses uh, like the Ocean View Restaurant here at 2 Boardwalk in Seaside Heights. Now, be mindful that one of the reasons we are doing this broadcast again here from this great outside space is to honor our veterans and remind people, because yes, they do need to be reminded that we have a three-day weekend, not just so you can uh, enjoy great barbecue and great beer, but also to recognize that we are free as a nation because so many before us gave the ultimate sacrifice. Memorial Day is specifically to remember the fallen. And, you know, I like to add to this that we want to honor not just the fallen and the families of the fallen, but the veterans today those that are serving right now and those that, that have completed their tours and are having trouble, whether it's with substance abuse, finding a job, getting a home. Joining me now, a true American hero, Colonel Scott Rudder. Great to see you, Colonel. Yep, Thank you for to joining back, me Bill. again. Thanks, sir. Um, you know, I didn't know you were going to be here today. I saw you. I'm like, you got to come on. We got to talk because Thanks. you have been at the forefront and I know, you, you know, I'm gonna, I want to give you the plug and I want you to plug your business because your business serves an important role in our New Jersey economy, especially when it comes to employing veterans, which is what you do. Um, but we talk about how there are veterans tonight, 29 in Sussex County alone, yep. who will sleep without a roof over their head tonight. Yeah. Uh, you've got homeless veterans, but you've also got a crisis of employment. And a lot of people like to look at statistics when they're in politics, especially Oh, don't worry. New Jersey is not worst in veteran unemployment. Veteran unemployment's only about four and a half to five and a half percent, depending. Yeah. yeah, but that's one out of twenty veterans that do not have a job that served our country overseas, many in combat situations that came back and don't have a place to work. Let's Absolutely. talk about it. And how many veterans are not coming back to New Jersey? And that's, that's the right. challenges with a lot of unemployment and so forth. We heard from some of my colleagues here concerning the consequences of unemployment, the homelessness and so forth. But how do we attack that other 95 percent, the 95 percent of veterans that are coming home that want to move in the communities? Think about it. You know, I would ask the politicians in, in certain communities, how many veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan and other areas are moving into your town? They're happy. They got the signs hanging up on the street poles of the World War II veterans, the Vietnam veterans and so forth. But how many veterans are there that are moving into that town? They can't afford it. Imagine the opportunities in those towns. And we know those towns in New Jersey that have been out there. So forth. they were made by World War II veterans. Why should we deny the people of those good towns in order to have veterans moving in? It's educational in order for teachers and family members to have veterans moving in towns, not just the World War II veterans, and rightly so, the greatest generation and other generations, but newer veterans. Imagine small businesses that get an incentive that hire veterans. 
Imagine property tax incentives. Think of the amount of barbershop chairs that would be filled. Electricians, you know, hiring additional veterans. Jersey has the opportunity in order to be the model state for veterans, getting them in there. But it starts at the county level and above. I used to say my metrics is how many liquor licenses in your town is owned by veterans? None. So that's a good metrics in order to compare right? it to. Think about no, it. it. it it's yeah. a great look, Scott. What you're saying, I mean, uh, it's it's why I love talking to you, and I appreciate your passion for this. Uh, I uh, I was controversial about I don't know maybe two or three years ago. They the legislature decided they were going to uh, push on the towns to say that veterans would get a free beach pass, and I was incensed, and I yeah. attacked it. I said, first of all. You're you are equating two different things. The reason the towns have the beach passes is somebody's got to groom the sand, pick up the trash, pay for the lifeguards. Nothing is free. Yeah. Is it? And and to go to veterans where you've got one in twenty who can't find a job, you've got hundreds that are experiencing homelessness, thousands who are experiencing trouble with substance abuse, etc. All of these things going on, and you're telling me you're going to give them an eight dollar beach pass, and yeah. that's like talk about virtue signaling. It it made me angry. People are like, you got to calm down about that. Oh, yeah. Why are you so mad about yeah. it? I'm like, no, I, there, there should not be one homeless vet before we go and say, we're going to throw out this perk. How many veterans are like, you know what? I'll pay the eight bucks for the beach pass. Can I get a job, please? Yeah. It's like Don King paying Mike Tyson, you know, and so forth. Can't just yeah. pay him in $1 bills right. and so forth. We got to stand up to it and we got to deal with it. Incentives for smaller businesses. Not everybody wants to work for the government, but think about the great people in communities in Ocean County and Monmouth County and Bergen County and so forth that, that have small businesses that want to hire veterans. You know, we all know I'm a small business owner. You know, it's important that when I hire someone, I don't want to lay them off. Give those small businesses an incentive, a little bit of a cushion in order to hire more veterans to step up to the plate in order to do that and get them into those communities that they're not moving into. What we need is a legislature that understands this. And short of having that, we need a governor that understands this. And I have a sneaking yeah. suspicion we will at some point in the future. I hope uh, so. Great to see you, Colonel. Thanks Thank you lot, for sir. coming on. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Colonel Scott uh, Rudder. Sean, maybe. Thanks a lot, sir. Uh, you know what? We're going to bring Sean in. I'm not even going to go to break. I want to bring Sean in uh, because I don't want to run out of time. I've got uh, several more stops today, as you guys can imagine. We are doing four or five events every day, seven days a week, because people need to know that help is on the way. We're not going to let New Jersey fall to the radicals and the woke mob. We are going to bring it back. Sean Maybe, Man, it's great to see you. How are you? So Sean Maybe is a good friend of mine. He's the one that connected me with Scott Rudder. And uh, Sean is a councilman in Kinnelon in Morris County and does a ton of work when it comes to veterans. I mean, you're the reason we were able to attend and and do that uh, event for the Butler VFW when they flooded out. Uh, tell me what this and you do the I love it he's got I don't know how he does it but he gets his Black Hawk helicopter to land at the Kinelon City Hall every year on Veterans Day and it's just a spectacle I mean it's so cool yeah so um, some of the gentlemen that were here speaking before it all comes from Wayne Stein um, Wayne is the connection. He had to work today, right? He couldn't join yeah, us. Yeah, he couldn't make it today. He's the post um, commander he, at the he VFW. He was calling me before Butler. getting the play-by-play. He likes to get the play-by-play, so yeah. he was calling me. Um, he had the connection with the National Guard, um, with Vinny Saracusa and all those people. And, um, you know, the, um, the the powers to be down there set all that up for us. Um, every year, they just they love the idea of us doing that in the community to really bring the people out. Number one, to honor the veterans, but also to uh, really show the community and people of the service of what our men and women do to serve our country. National Guard, Army, uh, Marines, Navy, Air Force, so on and so forth. Um, it, it's, you know, the passion about the country. It's it's uh, service to the country. And, you know, it, it's more than ever, it's more important to make sure our younger children and our youth understand that yeah. there are good men and women that serve the country and you have to honor them. I love it. Sean could not have said that better myself. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you. We're going to be seeing you very soon. Yes, we are. Thank you. Sean, maybe. Uh, Before I get to a break, I actually, I don't mean to put him on the spot, but my good friend Mark Taylor is here, uh, mayor from Florham Park. Let's give him a round of applause. Uh, Mark, if you don't mind, can you just join me for a second? Uh, This is, um, 
Mark and Ace Gallagher, who is the mayor in Hanover, these are the two leaders, and Jamie Barbario and Parsippany. How are you, Mark? Good Hi, to Bill. see you. How are you? Uh, they, sorry to put you on the spot. Wow. But, uh, go ahead. Put the headphones on. Just, uh, uh-huh. we, uh, these are the guys that let me know about all of this flood mitigation and what was happening in Morris County. Uh, I look at this, and I wanted to ask you about this, Mark, and I'll talk to you about veterans in a second, but um, it's not political to me. This environmental management, this idea that we need good government, this is not about partisan politics. This is about, you know, to me, like serving your country. It's not about whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. Or it is we as a country, as a community, have to come together with some common sense. I, I couldn't agree more, Bill. Uh, the problem is that, as you said earlier, it's not 15 years. It's 30 years of neglect. Yeah. Our, our cities have been flooding, uh, and it's as a result of high-density housing that's causing it. You can't keep putting buildings yeah, right. in spots where there are going to be rivers that are going to flow. Right. And when you do that, you've got to disperse the water somewhere else. Yeah. So with these rivers being silt filled, you know, four, seven, 18 inches deep when they used to be six feet deep, have great banks, which they don't have any longer. They've all eroded. Uh, there's no place for the water to go. Yeah. And with that said, you know, this uh, effort that Ace and I have uh, got together with five other towns, Morristown, Parsippany, Morris Plains, East Hanover, and Hanover Township. And yeah, Mayor Park. Panula, Joe Panula is a part of that. Absolutely. Good guy. Just saw him the other night. Great Absolutely. guy. East Hanover. Right? Yes. Yep. So we continue to fight to get funds to be able to clean up what we yeah. should have been doing 30 years ago. But the state will be in our way the entire time. Not for long. Let's, Let's just pray. say that. Let's yes. pray for that, right? Change is Absolutely. coming. Um, uh, real quick on the veterans, you know, you, uh, you've you been a champion and a leader in your town, Florham Park, standing up for veterans, standing up for cops. Uh, do you think people are getting the message of, of why we actually have a three-day weekend? I, I hope they do. You know, I always uh, do a, a very nice ceremony at our first day yeah. squad uh, on Monday, on Memorial Day, and I try to emphasize that. This is not yeah. just the picnic that everybody says. Right. Those men and women have fought for our freedom and continue to do so so that we can go to shop, we can go to the beach, we can do all the things right. that we do every single day. Uh, that's the reason why. That's it. Mayor yep. Mark Taylor, thank Great you. Great to see you, Bill. Great to Thanks see you. so much thank for you. having me. Thank you. All right, I want to bring in, uh, I, do I have to take a break first? I do. All right, so we're going to break for our sponsor, and then I want to wrap this up. Uh, you're going to meet a guy, John DeRosa, great guy. Just uh, He, he uh, has a song that he's written that I'm gonna, uh, we're going to end the show with, and uh, you need to hear it, and we're going to talk to him before he performs. But right now, let's hear from Acteon Networks. Josh and Connie are dining in a noisy restaurant with their new neighbors, the Finkelsteins. Do you like singing, too? But the Finkelsteins here. Do you like swinging, too? Now Josh and Connie are being invited back to the Finkelsteins for dessert. Hearing the right thing matters, especially when buying a video surveillance system for your home. It's the salesman selling Wi-Fi cameras, which need batteries, solar panels, or electric. Some Wi-Fi cameras are vulnerable to hacking and just plain old interference. Is there a monthly contract that's hard to get out of? Is customer support local? We're Acteon Networks, and when you call us, we're going to treat you like you're one of the family. Acteon's a local company. We probably shop together. So why not protect your family with a solution from Acteon Networks? Because not all misunderstandings work out. You're right. Swinging's great. Surveillance never blinks. Learn more today. Hey guys, Bill Spadia back with you. We are coming to the end of our live broadcast, Common Ground. You can find us on Rumble, on Facebook, on YouTube. And as always, you can go to the website, BillSpadia.com. You can also go to my show website, NJ1015.com slash BillSpadia. Uh, I want to thank New Jersey 101.5 FM, where you can find me every weekday, 6 to 10 a.m. And uh, I want to thank them for helping us host this, sponsor this, and make this podcast a reality. Uh, I will be coming at you not uh, this Monday, because it is, of course, Memorial Day, but I will be back with you on Tuesday. But stay tuned all weekend for the music. Now, speaking of music, actually, before I get to that and my next guest, uh, John DeRosa, I want to thank uh, Michael and D. Pellegrino. They were so generous to help advertise for this show that was coming on. Uh, Michael is a former police officer. Uh, give uh, the Pellegrinos a round of applause for our studio audience. I don't see them, but they were here earlier. Uh, just, uh, you know, again, a, a police officer who's still giving back, founded a successful company. It's just great to see that. So uh, also do me a favor, round of applause for all of our volunteers who are wearing the Common Sense uh, T-shirts. 
led by my assistant Sharon here. Thank you, ladies, for being here. Really appreciate that. And uh, when you depart today, take a sign um, because uh, we are we are showing the colors across the state to let people know that we stand with common sense, we stand with critical thinking, we stand with our vets. So if you stand with me, you know what we stand for because I've been on the air for nine years speaking truth through a lot of crazy stuff that's happened in this state. I can promise you change is on the way. But change doesn't come, thank you, change doesn't come unless we have a society that truly honors those that have come before us, those that have made the ultimate sacrifice, those that sacrifice every day. Think about it. There are military men and women right now, as you are enjoying a gorgeous day at the Jersey Shore, supporting small business and kicking off the Jersey Shore summer season. There are men and women deployed in faraway, horrible places that will not be joining their family and friends this weekend. We need to honor them as well. My next guest, John uh, DeRosa, is a singer, songwriter, and a true patriot. Man, it's been great to get to know you over the past year, John. You too, Bill. Yeah, so, so good to see you. Tell me, uh, you brought your guitar. I'm happy about that. All you right. were just in uh, in Tennessee. Yes. You uh, you won an award. You got tell me about the the song you wrote, uh, the journey you've been on, and then I want to hear it. Sure. I wrote a, I wrote a song for fallen soldiers and first responders. The title's called Thirteen One Three. And um, it did really well. And I, I'm a guy from Jersey. Yeah. And I wound up, uh, I got nominated for an award in Nashville last year. And I, I went there. And then I wound up signing a record contract in Nashville about four months ago. And w- did you write this after the disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan? Was that? Uh... On there. It was, I wound up writing it the, the same week. I wow. finished it two days before the 13 soldiers got killed. No kidding. And I had already titled it 13, and it was really? so it was it was unbelievable. Yeah, how it happened. And there's words in the song like um, "On Angels' Wings." That's the name of the flight. I didn't know it. Um, in the fabric of time, that was in a Reagan speech. Yeah, it, it would just all flowed and. Yeah, uh, that was a, uh, a very tough day in our country's history. 13 uh, heroes died at Kabul airport. Uh, with the completely botched and disastrous withdrawal with this current administration. Guys, we have to do better. And again, I say this to you as an American, as a patriot, as uh, someone who served, that we have to do better by our men and women in our armed forces. They deserve better than the administration that is supposedly leading them right now. Uh, When you have poor leadership in the halls of politics, in the halls of power in Trenton, Washington, people die. And they die unnecessarily. And our men and women in uniform signed up to potentially sacrifice their lives for the rest of us. We need to make sure that none of them have died in vain. And we need to make sure that none of them uh, have died because of sheer incompetence and weakness on the part of our American leadership. And that's something that we are going to change. We are going to change it in Washington in 2024. And we're going to change it in Trenton in 2025. Uh, John, thank you for being here. Um, Let me just ask you before you play. Uh, what does it mean to you that we've got so many brave men and women that are willing to step up and serve? Uh, they're my heroes. I, I was not in the military, but I've always respected the military. Yeah. And I just, I had to do something to help. I'm, you know, 58 yeah. years old, and I'm like, I'm a musician. I could, I could do something to help them, and that's what I wanted to do. So we're going to ask John to uh, play us out on this Memorial Day weekend. Uh, I am going to sign off now and just tell you, Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here in person at the Ocean View Restaurant. Thank you to our sponsors, Acteon Networks, Common Sense Club, New Jersey 101.5. Thank you for all that you do. Uh, Take advantage of this beautiful weekend. Kick off the summer season right, but make sure you take a moment on Monday. Take a moment on Monday to maybe just reflect quietly for a minute or two. Talk to your kids about the sacrifice that so many, so many Americans have made laying their lives down so that we could enjoy a free and prosperous nation. But guys, this free and prosperous nation goes away if we are not vigilant, if we are not strong, if we are not grounded in common sense and practical reality. We need to make a lot of changes. We need to elect the right people. We need to judge our politicians not by what they're going to give to us, but what are they going to do for our community? Will they be courageous enough to stand up to our enemies? Will they be strong enough 
to call things out when the the mob tells them no and it's not popular? Will they be strong enough and courageous enough to defy sometimes the popularity contest and the polls and go the way that the country needs? That's what we need. We need truth tellers. We need leaders. We need men and women of courage and integrity willing to make the sacrifice because we all have an obligation. We all have an obligation to stand up for the sacrifice that was made by so many who gave their lives for this great, great country. God bless America. Thank you all. I give you John DeRosa and 13. I close my eyes. I see your face. Remembering you is my saving grace I feel your touch I hear your laugh On angels' wings you're free at last Thirteen folds In the fabric of time On the mantle by your picture Fifty stars and thirteen stripes, thirteen folds. Now you're home. Red is for the blood you shed. White is for the story left unwritten. Blue is how my heart aches. Thirteen folds in the fabric of time Just for a moment Your light shine bright On destiny's wings you took flight You're in my heart My very soul now that you're gone, you're a hero for all. There's 13 folds in the fabric of time on the mantle by your picture. There's 50 stars and 13 stripes, 13 folds, now you're home. Red is for the blood you shed White is for your story left unwritten Blue is how my heart aches Thirteen folds in the fabric of time Red is for the blood you shed White is for the story left unwritten Blue is how our heart aches Thirteen folds in the fabric of time Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill.